The lesson outcome for this video is I can solve equations with variables on both sides. When we solve equations that have variables, in this case x, on both sides, we need to gather all the variable terms on one side of the equation and we need to gather all the constants on the other side of the equation. Remember that there are multiple ways to do this. Multiple ways. Now I'd want to stress that because the way that you are thinking of doing this problem right now might not be the same way that I solve it on the video. Remember that if we arrive at the same answer, most of the time that means you did things accurately. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to collect all the variable terms on one side of the equation. A lot of times students want to gather the variable part on the left hand side, but it actually doesn't matter which side you gather it on. I am going to gather it on the right hand side because it will keep my variable term positive. So to do this, I'm going to first add 8x to the left hand side of the equation. Now again, I'm doing that because I want to move it to the other side, so I need to get rid of it on this side. So negative 8x and a positive 8x add up to 0, so these will cancel or become 0. Remembering that we do the same thing on both sides of an equation, we also need to add 8x on the other side. When we simplify, we get 7 equals, now we have 4x plus 8x, which is 12x, minus 17. And now we have actually arrived at the same type of, type of equation that we've solved yesterday, and that is solving multi-step equations. To do this, we are going to undo the steps of PEMDAS, so instead of going in the order of operations, we are going to go in the reverse order. We're going to deal with addition and subtraction first. So I'm going to add 17 so that I will get my variable term alone, which is 12x. If I add 17 to the right-hand side, I need to add it to the left-hand side. Add 17. I keep my equation balanced by doing the same thing to both sides. 17 uh, plus 7, or 7 plus 17, is 24 and that will equal 12x and negative 17 and positive 17 add up to 0 and that is not needed any longer. And now lastly we are going to solve for x by dividing both sides by 12 to get x alone with a coefficient of 1 because 12 over 12 is 1 so we'll have 1x. Since we did it on the right hand side we need to do that on the left hand side. 24 divided by 12 is 2 equals 1x. Go ahead and try this example on your own. Okay, and again, keeping in mind that there are multiple ways of doing this problem, when I do it, if you have a different process but you come up with the same answer, chances are good that you have done it correctly. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to gather my variable terms, which are x terms, and I'm going to gather them on the left-hand side this time because it'll keep everything positive. So again, I'm going to subtract 2x from the right-hand side. If I subtract 2x from the right-hand side, I need to subtract 2x from the left-hand side. Again, I do this because 2x and minus 2x will become 0. And I've got on the left-hand side now I have 13 plus 5x minus 2x, which is 3x, equals negative 8. Now be careful. This negative 8 right here, this negative sign or subtraction sign means negative 8 needs to be on the right hand side. I want to get my x value alone and my x term alone, so I'm going to subtract 13 to get that x by itself. And again, I'm subtracting it because right now 13 is positive, so we need the opposite. So we're going to subtract 13 from both sides. <clears throat> positive 13 and negative 13 make 0, so we now have positive 3x equals negative 21. The last thing we need to do to get x alone is divide by 3 because 3 over 3 is 1, so we'll have 1x. We have to do the same thing to the other side. 
So we get x equals negative 7. In this next problem, um, we now have the distributive property that we need to perform first before uh, getting our variable terms on one side and our constant terms on the other side. So the first thing we're going to do, just like we learned a couple lessons ago, is we are going to distribute the 2, multiply it by both terms in the parentheses. We're going to multiply. When we do so, please rewrite the whole equation. You're going to make less mistakes along the way if you're neat and organized. We've got 2 times 3y. 2 times 3 is 6, so we have 6y. Bring down the subtraction sign, and we've got 2 times 4, which is 8. Now, we need to come uh, collect our like terms on the same side of the equation. I'm going to choose to start by subtracting 5y from both sides. Here are two, uh, or actually three other options you could have done. You could have added 2. Uh, could have added 2 to undo this or get rid of this. We could have added 8 to both sides to get rid of this. We could have subtracted 6y from both sides as well. I'm going to subtract 5y. When I do so, I have negative 2. Again, being careful for that negative sign. Negative 2 equals 6y minus 5y is 1y. You could have just written a y minus 8. Sorry about the sloppiness there. Now, again, we need to get y alone, 1y alone on a side. So we're going to add 8 because negative 8 and positive 8 make 0. We have to do the same thing to both sides. Negative 2 plus 8. Negative 2 plus 8 is 6. And we've got 1y, or just y. Negative 8 and positive 8 become 0. So we have y equals 6. Okay, one last example. Go ahead and try this one on your own. If you're confused about the one half, go ahead and watch this first step with me and then pause the video and try the rest on your own and then check back to see how you did. So again, the first step is to get rid of our parentheses to distribute the one half. So again, we are going to multiply 1 half times the 8x and multiply the 1 half times the 20. Leaving 8x minus 6 here. Half of 8x is 4x, because half of 8 is 4, plus half of 20 is 10. Now go ahead and solve the rest of this, solve this equation for x and then check back to see how you did. Again, you could start this problem right now by subtracting 4x from both sides. You could subtract 10 from both sides. You could add 6 to both sides. Or you could subtract 8x from both sides. I'm going to choose to subtract 4x and move my variable parts together first. If I do something to one side of the equation, I must do it to the other side. 8x's minus 4x's is 4x minus 6 equals 4x minus 4x is 0 plus 10. We don't need to show the plus in this case. Now I need to get my x alone on the side, so I'm going to get rid of this 6 by adding 6, doing the opposite operation. I'm going to add 6 over here. I have 4x remaining on this left-hand side because negative 6 and positive 6 make 0, and 10 plus 6 is 16. So 4 times what value equals 16? Well, 4 times 4 is 16, so we know x is 4. Another way of showing it is dividing both sides by 4. 4 divided by 4 makes 1, so we get x equals 4.